Presenting the Canon F1. This is a video that we have been getting a lot of requests for. So finally we caved in and here it is, the revered Canon F1. The reason we have not touched on this camera until now is that we simply didn't have one. You see, we make these videos with the cameras we have in stock and for sale, which you can see on the Japan Camera Hunter website. So when this olive drab F1 arrived, we knew we were going to make a star of it. But before we get into that, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We don't actually have any sponsors. So instead, why don't you head over to our spring store and come and grab some of this cool apparel. We've got new stuff coming up on there all the time. So come and check it out and show your support for the channel. Thank you. Right, back to the nitty gritty. The Canon F1 was released in 1970 or 1971, depending on which records you read, and was aimed to be a direct competitor with the Nikon F and F2 cameras. It was Canon's first foray into the professional SLR market, and Canon wasn't messing about, releasing the camera with a huge number of accessories and range of lenses. You see, Canon learned from earlier mistakes and made sure to have a complete range of accessories available upon launch of the F1. In fact, the F1 has possibly the largest range of accessories for any SLR. But first, we should clear something up that is a little bit confusing. You see, the Canon F1 and the F1N are the same but different cameras. You have the F1N and the F1, which is this camera, and this is a fully mechanical camera, which has a meter in the finder, and the F1N does as well. But the new F1N is a different camera with a very similar name, and it is a fully electronic camera. The new F1N, you can tell the difference from an F1, which is one of these, or an F1N, which is one of these, the body has a step on it, but the biggest giveaway, easiest way to tell, is if your shutter dial has a red A on it, then you have a new F1N. Easy as pie. Now, back to this camera. This one is rather special. Yes, it is an F1, which makes it special to me, bro. But you may have noticed the khaki drab color. This is not a repainted or custom camera. This was Canon tapping into military chic before it was cool. The Canon Olive F1 Drab was released as a special edition in 1978. Now, supposedly, there were 2,002 of these made. 1,000 for the domestic market and the rest for the rest of the world. But Canon Europe claims that no cameras were sold to the rest of the world and Canon doesn't release serial numbers, so nobody knows actually how many were made, how many were sold. Canon's not going to tell us these secrets. So, there is also compounded by the fact that there's a lot of repainted cameras out there, because people do repaint this camera. It's a really desirable camera. You can usually tell, though, if it's a repainted camera, the quality of the paint, and you'll see the body number on the inside printed onto the paint in the original camera. That's usually a bit of a giveaway, so you can tell if your camera's real or not. The thing is, nobody really knows why Canon made this camera. It was a special edition, but it wasn't made for the military. And Canon, as Canon is, is notoriously tight-lipped about these sort of things, so they're not saying anything. All I can assume is somebody at Canon had a bit of a military fetish and this camera was born. But enough of me waffling on about this meanie greenie. So why don't we, uh, you must be all bored to tears, why don't we take it out for a spin?
The lens on this camera is the fabled 50mm 1.4 SSC, which really has a beautiful and bokelicious, don't sue me Kai, character. Bokelicious photos. This camera uses the FD mount lenses, which can be a bit limiting compared to Nikon, as Canon has like 11 different mounts but they did release a total of 68 different lenses for this mount, so there are options. Fun fact, the original Canon Super Telephoto lenses had white bodies, not to look cool, but to stop the fluorite glass from expanding and destroying your lens when the lens was in bright sunlight. The camera itself is very simple, but it does have all the features you would expect from a pro SLR, albeit one from the late 60s, early 70s. It has a mirror lockup function. There is a meter on off switch on the back of the camera and you can test the battery with that. But the cool thing is the TTL meter on this camera isn't in the mirror, it isn't in the finder. It's actually on the focusing screen. So you can use this camera's meter whilst the finder is off the camera, which makes it very cool indeed. If you are used to using a Nikon, as I am, you're not going to find this camera as perhaps intuitive as the Nikon. The shutter dial can be a bit fiddly. The aperture ring feels like it's in the wrong place compared to what you're used to. But those aren't necessarily bad things. This is a great camera. I had a lot of fun using it. I really enjoyed it. Would it make me sell my Nikons to jump ship over to Canon? No, it wouldn't. But I would consider this a worthy piece in anybody's collection. And I would say, if you're wanting to look for an SLR, if you're thinking of a, a good quality SLR, then this should definitely be one of your options. It is a brilliant camera and it is a real joy to use. Pros and cons. Pros, there are tons of them and they are relatively inexpensive. Insane number of accessories, green. Cons, they need a battery adapter to use modern cells. Lens mounts and camera versions can be a little bit confusing. Maybe green isn't your thing, so get a black one instead. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, press the button down below, ding the bell, all of that lovely stuff, and come and visit the Japan Camera Hunter website and come and buy a camera. Thanks, and thanks for watching.